Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope you all enjoyed a great 2018, and I hope you're ready for the new year. Guys, I, I just uh, I implore you, I, I suggest highly that you um, consider where your life is right now. You have a whole new year ahead of you in just two days. It's the 29th. We have two more days. Good morning, Timothy. And I'd like you to consider the new year as you um, end this year for your life. You consider where you're going in, in 2019. Are you are you going in the direction you 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 want? I mean, have you have you considered how you want to live your life? Have you been living your life the way you, you want? Um, in the direction you want it to go. I, as a believer in Christ, I want to go his way. I want his will to be done for my life, and he's done some things in my life, and I'm going to share briefly, um, that has led me closer to him. And the more, the closer I get to Jesus, the more I, I want to live for him, the more I want to serve him. And I want to go in that direction. So as we live life, we sometimes get so bogged down in details. We get so bogged down in routines. We can only think about our jobs. We might be able to only think about our, our, our families, but maybe we fail to see a bigger picture. And we get to fail to see um, how much more we can uh, apply ourselves in, in certain ways. In other words, I'm going to talk about um, if you haven't considered this before, you haven't been um, told this, um, when we seek God wholeheartedly, um, he begins to change us. He begins to transform us. You know, you hear the phrase, people don't change. And that's pretty much true. You see people one year and you might see them five, ten years later, and, and typically, chances are, they don't change. Because let's face it, we only change by uh, what we're influenced by, the friends we have and the books we read. If we don't, if we don't infuse our lives with new um, things, thoughts, ideas, um, we're going to continue down the same path we've always gone down. So um, if I don't know where you are in your life. And this is awkward for me because I know I might be talking to um, believers in Jesus and I might be talking to people that don't know God at all. So bear with me here. But I'm just telling you, um, there is judgment. I had a, a video just recently about the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel message. And this goes in line with that because um, we, we need to seek God, as far as I'm concerned, to avoid uh, a judgment at the end of our lives. You know, what, what's it all matter? What's it all mean when we, when we suggest or when we consider what we'd want, how we, we'd want to be eulogized, how people would like to be, well, how did Larry Pittman live his life? And this is the big deal. This is about not wasting your life. This is about living a life that when it's all said and done, you wouldn't want to look back and say, man, I regret this and I regret that. And, you know, and what do I have to show for it? When we, when we are in the throne room and there's the judgment, uh, we're all going to be judged. If we're a believer in Jesus, we're going to be, uh, um, we're going to be saved from God's wrath, but we'll still be judged for our works and our efforts and what we've done for, you know, how we've lived our life. So how, how do you want that to go? I guess I should say. Um, all I'm talking about is um, a way to live intentionally, because I believe if if we purposely set out to live in a way that's intentional, um, we can change our, our, our outcome. We can change the lives around us. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about producing fruit in our lives that um, doesn't normally ordinarily happen unless we tap in to the one source that can give us um, uh, a, a fruit and a, a a joy and a peace and love in our lives that can't come from anywhere else. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, welcome everybody that's that's joined us. Welcome Brett Brown. 
Sean Raymond Ashfik Ash 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 welcome guys so um, I want to talk about my brief testimony or I want I want to briefly talk about my testimony excuse me for being a little nervous um, guys I, I uh, was uh, before 2007 I didn't have much aim in my life at all I was uh, pretty pretty aimless I had no routine I was a bit lazy and um, I wasn't a reader at all and it I didn't have much excitement. I didn't have much passion. I was I was pretty much lukewarm. So um, I uh, I the Lord did something in my heart that I can't even um, begin to explain. He He gave me this desire that I never had before to seek Him. I He gave me a desire or a hunger to know Him more. And and in two thousand seven. Um, actually, the end of 2006, he gave me this this idea, and I, I, I can only say confidently that he gave me this idea because I know these ideas don't come from anywhere else. I was driving down the 91 freeway. It was there in California, and I got this idea to read through the Bible in, two, in 2007, and that's something that I, I've never done before, and like I, I already confessed to you, I wasn't much of a reader at all after public education. I want nothing more to do with, with books. Um, but nevertheless, um, he gave me this idea to read through the Bible. And uh, so I shared that with uh, a few close friends, and I got nothing but encouragement. And uh, so then I shared it with my brother eventually, who was living in Pennsylvania. He still is. And um, I said, I said, Jeff, I said, I, I got this idea to read through the Word of God. And he says, how about I join you? And I says, wow, I didn't even expect him. I didn't expect anyone to really join me. I just figured I just share. I, and I see that's what I'm telling you. I don't even know where I got that idea to share with people. That's something I don't know. It's kind of personal. It's kind of like you know, it's your own kind of thing. And you know, I wouldn't want to you know put that. It's a, it's a burden because it's a lot of reading. It's like three to four chapters a day. And for me, I'm a slow reader. I don't read fast. Some people can read you know 15 minutes out of the day. And they can read their their portion. But me, that's not it's not me. So anyway, 2007 is when uh, the Lord, Lord really got a hold of me. He developed a discipline that I did not have before. He led me to be persistent that I did not have before. And I started growing. And in, above and beyond reading, I started praying differently. So he, you know, my heart was changing. And I don't know what's going on in your life, but I just, um, I, I, I suggest to you, if you have not been seriously seeking the Lord, um, to do so in 2019, because Everything changed for me, and I can't believe that um, the Lord would have done that for me and, and that it wouldn't apply to anyone else. You know what I'm saying? I'm no one special. Not, not really. I'm an ordinary guy. Sharon knows me. She used to babysit me, and, and I'm, just, I'm just Larry Pittman. I'm not, um, I'm not anything really uh, special. I'm about as ordinary as they come. And so um, the Lord led me to read, and I, I kept up. And what was really cool about that year was my brother and I, we'd follow the same reading plan. And uh, every time we talked, because we were, you know, long distance. I was in California. He was in Pennsylvania. And, and we, just, we just shared what we were reading in the Word of God. And that, that, that brought us each closer to God, and it brought us each closer to each other. My brother, he was four years older than me. And so before then, we weren't all that that close, but we're now, you know, closer than we've ever been. So um, uh, by the end of 2007, after having reading the Word of God all year, it, I was a changed person. And not to mention, like I said, my, my prayer life changed. So in John 4:24, 4, uh, Jesus says to the woman at the well, he said, For God is spirit, we must worship in spirit and in truth. So worshiping him... And being sitting at his feet, which we're going to discuss a little later, is is all about um, in in spirit, and that's prayer. So we must be in prayer. And let's face it: if if we are not um, used to praying, if we don't have a daily habit, something other than uh, saying grace at the table, let's face it: uh, we can say that all day long. But it, you know, what does it really mean? Um, I mean, I, I'm not saying not to say grace. I'm just saying that it can become so uh, routine and just a ritual. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, it's, it's giving God lip service. And I'm saying worship him with our whole lives as we lay down, as we get up in the morning. Commit yourselves to him as we drive around town. Say, keep me safe, Lord. Thank you 
for everything you've given me. And the more we're in that mindset of praying to our Lord, knowing that he's always with us, he promised to be always with us. And, um, and so we, we enjoy that presence. And the more we enjoy the presence of God, you know, the, 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 the more joy, the more comfort, the more peace we have in our life, knowing that um, the Lord is with us, knowing that wherever we go, uh, good morning, Pamela and, and Michael, knowing wh wherever we go, he's with us and he's given us that peace. So I'm talking about a whole change in, in, in your, this changes our attitude. This, you know, as we talk to people uh, throughout our day and we meet people, we can bring Christ to others. This is about not waiting for the next Sunday to bring people to church for. This is about being, being a part of the body of Christ. It's about being church, not going to church. So in other words, when we have that presence of Christ about us in, in our daily lives, um, we can, you know, meet someone that, that might need prayer. We might see the countenance on their face and they, they're looking uh, pretty stressful or anxious or worried. And at that point, we can say, is there something I can pray for? Can I help you? And so that's what being in the presence of God is all about. And um, so my life has changed. I'm not the same person I was in 2006. Uh, 2007 was a transformative life for me just because I, uh, I diligently sought God. I didn't do anything really special. And, and the Lord had showed me in, in supernatural ways, and you can check out my testimony if you haven't seen it yet, but, and I'm not going to share that right now, but he showed me in supernatural ways the three activities we absolutely need or the absolutely essentials in order to grow in Christ. And when we grow in Christ, that's really what brings the transformation. If you're not actively involved in these three activities, then I suggest you're, you're probably not growing. Uh, for many years, I considered myself a Christian, but I didn't grow at all. I might have learned new things. I might have learned intellectually more things about God, but I didn't know him very well. I knew him just on kind of a superficial level. Hey, God, how you doing? What's up? And then I'd walk out the door, right? And then I'd come home and I might say a couple words to God later, but I didn't have that active presence of God in my, in my heart. And, 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 and so when we actively, diligently seek him, and stay in that good soil, which we're going to discuss here real shortly, um, then, only then, do we really start to grow. Only then do we really start to be transformed. So the three activities, our prayer, um, our prayer life has to change, um, and, um, and, and we have to start being relational. Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, please reveal yourself to me. Please help me to live. The more we seek God, the more we realize how much we can't do on our own. The more we seek God, the more we realize how great he is. So prayer life. And the second thing is, is being in the word of God, being in the Bible, because um, the Bible is his truth. The Bible is, uh, is, is knowledge of God. And we, we, we learn so much in all of scripture. And uh, I, I'm, 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 dead serious about reading the Old Testament just as much as you read the New, because there's so much in the Old Testament that we learn from. The Old, the, the New Testament authors told us to read the Old Testament. That's their instructions for us to know the Old Testament, because it's a foundation. Now, it's the Old Covenant, but we, it's, the, the whole Old Testament isn't the Old Covenant. The Old, Tes Old Covenant is in the Old Testament. But just because we don't go by the Old Covenant doesn't mean we can't learn from the Old Testament. And the only reason it's old is just because it's older than the New Testament. It doesn't make it obsolete. Okay, so prayer, reading, the Word of God, and, um, and fellowship. We need to hang out with those that love God. And this is above and beyond going to a church and sitting in a pew. This is about sharing your lives with other people about God. This is about sharing your lives and sharing the Word with other people. So you share your burdens, as we're told in Galatians 6, and we just, we just share. We exchange our lives with other people. This is how we love people, this fellowship that's, that's with people that love God. And then we, we talk about the Word of God. And that's what we do on our Bible team calls every Monday night. So I don't want to spend any more than an hour, um, if, if, that, if, that's, uh, if that's possible, but um, we shouldn't have to at all. So I'm going to get right into a Bible study that talks directly about what it's doing. So my testimony is God's changed me. 
and through the activities I'm, I'm going to talk to you about that I, that I, I suggest you, you apply, um, these are just three essential things, very basic. I'm not going to say anything great or new this morning. I'm going to uh, talk about people that um, talk, I'm going to talk about basic things to do um, to seek God. Uh, good morning, Mike Spirito. Good to see you, buddy. Um, old Marine Corps buddy, Mike Spirito, and Michael Tishnell, of course. Good morning, brother. So um, this is a Bible study that I want to share. It's all about producing fruit. Jesus says, you know, you shall know them by their fruit. And the fruit um, can, uh, usually is, is uh, it comes in forms of actions. And so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to share right here. <laughs> it's always awkward for me. Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Guys, I don't rehearse for this, <laughs> as you can tell. There is no law against these things. So um, let's talk about this a little bit. How many of you could use patience? And how about kindness? Some, day, some days I'm such a grouch. And um, I, think, I think really, uh, in my flesh, I just want to be grouchy to everybody. But the Lord, he gives me kindness when I don't, when I, when I don't even think about it. He, he, he makes me more kind than I, I really uh, feel. Um, faithfulness, goodness, peace, there's all kinds of, this is the fruit. And I, I'm telling you, my friends, if only the Christian church, if only the North American church can, can tune in to God and seek him in a way that will produce our fruit. Here's the secret of the fruit. We can't produce our own fruit. We can't make ourselves be more kind. We can't make ourselves be patient. You can think, you can talk about patience all day. That doesn't mean you're going to have more. Here's, here's what it says. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. It's his job. That's what he does. We can't make it. And here's, here's, the, uh, here's the key to producing good fruit. This is this is something we absolutely need to um, embrace. I'm trying to find the verses. Okay, so this is about producing fruit, and let's face it: um, when we call ourselves Christians, and we tell our brothers or people that we work with, uh, neighbors, we call ourselves Christians, and then we don't have that kind of fruit. What kind of a witness does that make us look like? Oh, he's that he's that butthole that 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 rode me off the road. He's that jerk that took the last sip of coffee and you know, he didn't let me have any at the at the coffee station. I mean this is such a fundamental thing and it's such a problem in the Christian church because we're not seeing transformed lives. The divorce rate is about the same between marriages between the Christian church and and people that don't acknowledge religion. Um, and there's all these indicators that suggest that there's nothing really special going on in our, in our churches. And it's because of this issue. People are not tuning in. They're not seeking God. Um, they're, they're just going to church. They're calling themselves Christians. They might even read their Bible. But we need to worship him in spirit. And we need that fellowship with other people. That's really what transforms us. And only then will we not fear bad, bad news. Will we not uh, live like the other people? We won't worry about our bills. We won't worry about what we're going to eat. And, and, you know, the, remember Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow. And so if, if you have a joy and a peace that comes from God that, that transcends all things, then um, you're going you're gonna to be different. You're going to be set apart. And that's what we're talking about. This, will, this, this practice, this um, discipline of, of seeking him on a daily basis um, will, will, will give us that, that growth and a transformation that God intends you to have. And again, I'm not telling you anything special. I'm not giving you any, uh, uh, um, any grand ideas that have never been talked before. This is all biblical, spiritual, but it, it's simple, but yet it's not easy. And we're going to get to talk to that. So here's, we're going to continue in our study, and this won't take long. So John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Let's make it clear. <laughs> Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We are not the vine. Remember I said we can't produce our own fruit. This is about um, God producing fruit in us. So I'm the vine, you're the branches. Those who remain in me 
and I in them will produce much fruit. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do what? What's that word? What's that word? For apart from me, you can do nothing. Thank you. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for whatever you want, for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Thank you, Pamela. This brings great glory to my Father. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So I'm all about producing uh, fruit in my life and teaching others how to allow yourself to be in a place where the Holy Spirit produces fruit in you. Because let's face it, if you're not remaining in Christ, the Holy Spirit can't produce the fruit in you if you're not connected to the vine. That's how it works. You can't just call yourself a Christian. Just go to church and sit your Bible on the shelf for a whole week and live like that ongoing, expecting the Holy Spirit to produce fruit in you. It's just not going to happen. We need to be about his business daily. It's about a daily walk with him. Die to yourself daily. Give him your life. Wake up in this morning, wake up in the morning, commit yourself to him and say, Lord, I don't know how to live. I need your help. And it really comes down to that. And, and, and the more you the more you seek God, the more your pride will be stripped away. It will. He will teach you and show you how um, inadequate we really we really are to be honest. Um, it's a beautiful thing. So, so this is about remaining in Christ and being about his, in his presence constantly. And when you are uh, making that intentional uh, uh, way of living every day, um, you, 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 um, <laughs> you become more and more like him. Um, I'm not sure what else I need to add to that. I think that concludes our study. Um, now I want to switch to uh, a practical way of living. And I want to um, look up. I have uh, tips. I have uh, some resources as a result of my transformation in 2007. I uh, was, uh, God really put it on my heart to create a, a website. It was something I, I could do. I, I did, you know, um, in my profession. So I created a website called thebibleteam.com. And the whole purpose of thebibleteam.com is to help people develop a daily habit of reading. Um, giving them tips and I give tools. I have a reading plan creator. So I want to talk about um, daily tips. How do I um, develop a daily commitment of uh, seeking God and reading the Word? So I have, um, I'm going to look up on my other screen here, reading tips. And I'm going to cover reading tips. And so I'm going to get really practical here because, um, let's face it, guys, when we, when we aren't used to seeking God diligently, we're, doing, we're just doing our own thing. We are, you know, living our lives. And, and I'm not saying all your lives are... are <laughs> Yeah, of course, not all your lives are bad because you're spending time with family, you're spending time with work, you're spending time with your spouse, and um, there's a lot of good things people do. However, we need to seek God first. We need to put Him first and make sure um, we do it, it, you know, as He as would please Him. And part of that is spending time with God. You know, I always like to think it's like um, it's like the guy that has the the teenager for a kid, and um, the teenager. Uh, runs out the door and he, he, he wants gas money, he wants the keys, right? So if you're the father and that teenager doesn't tell you about his day and that the, the teenager doesn't like share his life with you, um, he, the, the father feels kind of left out. There goes my boy. He, he just picked up the keys. He, he ran out the door and he grabbed the 20 and, and, and uh, you know, he's going to get home later than I'm up. And, and all I'm saying is our Heavenly Father wants us to spend time with Him. He doesn't want us to just pray for bread and pray for, uh, you know, what we need. He, he wants us to spend the time. And that's why, my friends, 
The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and, uh, strength and soul. And that's what we're talking about here. Diligently seeking him is fulfilling the greatest commandments. So um, this is about loving him with everything you've got and then loving your neighbor. Because I'm telling you, you cannot love your neighbor without loving God. Because you won't have the love of God in you to love your neighbor. Remember the spirit. We need to be uh, remaining in Christ. So if we're living a secular life, if, if that's what we know and we're not used to this, if this is a new concept and something we want to pursue, um, it's difficult. It's difficult because, A, there's so many forces that we have our flesh working against us and, um, and, and the devil's working against us too. He has, um, he has an active presence in our lives and we need, we need to just know that. And he's going to do everything he can, the devil, to keep us from reading the word and from, and from seeking God. So he'll distract us in many creative ways. And I, I know exactly how that's like. But here's my promise to you. My promise to you is if you continue uh, seeking God and you continue and you persist in these things, reading the word of God and spending time in fellowship, you, you will work through the difficulties. You will get to a point where, A, you want to read the Word of God, because I'm telling you, you're not going to always want to read the Word of God. And you, if you are not used to it, you, you just won't, because your flesh will be like, I don't really want to, I've read that before, I don't need to read it again, or it's so difficult to understand. Look, it, it requires patience. It requires consistency. And the more consistent we are with reading the Word of God, the more consistent we are with fellowshipping others, making sustainable, um, meaningful relationships with others, the more we want it. So it's about changing some habits on a, on a weekly and a daily basis that we're not used to. They're foreign. Uh, the Bible, for many of us, is foreign. You know, some of the concepts of what it talks about, it's like hard to grasp. But here's the thing if you continue, he will give you a desire. He will give you understanding. He will feed you in a way that you, you've never been fed before. So he led me in 2007 to, to cast off my addiction to the Yankees baseball because I, I was like addicted. If the, if the Yankees won, I was on cloud nine. If the Yankees lost, I was down in the dumps. I was addicted. It was 162 games a year. Are you kidding me? But he gave me a piece prior to the preseason through reading his word. He gave me a piece I'd never had before. And by the time preseason started, I, I like like a like a monkey, like um, Pavlov effect. I would I would turn on the ESPN and and tune in, and I could tell that anxiety just came right back. And the Lord, He spoke to me. He says, Larry, He says, I think you should distance yourself from baseball and from sports in general. Because I was a sports, you know, I was into sports more than I, I should have been. So anyway, he he did that for me. He gave me a piece. And so he, whatever time I spent devoted to baseball in 2006, I then spent that time with him, spending time in his work. Do you see, you you, you kind of change your, your, your ways there a little bit. You, I had very little desire after a while for baseball and all the desire to spend in his word. So, so there's a, there's kind of a learning, not a learning curve, so to speak. I mean, he, he gives you more understanding of the word. I promise you that. Um, but it's a, it's a kind of a, a growth. Um, yeah, Michael says, and he will fight for you against your trials and tribulations. Absolutely. There you go. There's a great testimony. Uh, Michael Tishnell, my buddy from school. Um, he will fight for you against your trials and tribulations. So, yes. So, um, in other words, it's worth it. Stay consistent. Just know that this is the right thing. I'm telling you, what I'm giving you today is more important than a weekly church service. Absolutely more important because what's going to happen is you're going to develop your own faith. And you're not going to be relying on the faith of your pastor. You're not going to be relying on your faith of your Bible study leader. You're going to develop your own faith in Christ that no one can take away from you. He'll give you a confidence like you've never had before. But I'm telling you, it's not easy. We need to work for it. It's a consistent, it's a persistence that he wants. Just show up every day. Just open your Bible every day. Speak to him. Pray to him. I'm telling you, the more you do this, the more you'll want to do it. And develop those deep Christian relationships that we're meant to have and are meant to bless us. So 
some of the reading tips I have. Um, make Bible reading a high priority daily. I'm going to put this in front of me so I'm not looking away. Um, make Bible reading a high priority daily. In other words, if you get one thing done today, read a chapter. And I'm going to talk about reading plans in a little bit. I don't really care how much you read every day. But, uh, you know, a half chapter, a chapter, something. Something that you can mull over. Something that you can consider and, and take with you the rest of the day. And that's not easy, but we, we want to meditate on Scripture um, and think about what we're reading about. And that stays with us. And, and that helps to memorize, you know, what goes on in this chapter, what goes on in that chapter. We can, you know, think about the life events of uh, Noah, of Moses, and all these great uh, people that have gone before us, these big uh, players of, uh, in, in, in God's game. Um, so make Bible reading a highly priority. This is in line with, it's putting God first is what I'm telling you to do. This might mean getting up earlier or setting a time aside prior to bedtime. Reading some in the morning and some at night is ideal. I love to read, if I can, first thing in the morning, and I love to read at least a little bit before I put my head on the pillow, or even after I put my head on the pillow. I'm, I'm kind of lazy that way. I have this uh, a tablet that um, I make it so that it's uh, not really bright. Um, I make it, I put the nighttime thing on, and I read it, I read in bed, and it, it, it still feeds me. It, it, you know, I, I can't make notes and do that kind of thing, but, you know, when you're reading daily, um, you know, the study notes and the, the you know, the, the, the Bible study habits um, aren't, aren't as important as just getting in the Word and getting the words in your, in your uh, mind so they can stir in your heart. That's most important. But, you know, take, you know, time at least once a week to, to do more studying. Okay, so make Bible reading a high pri priority daily, and these are all on the website, reading tips uh, for uh, thebibleteam.com. Uh, the second tip is have a Bible with you at all times. And when I wrote these tips, the Bibles weren't on our phones. I don't remember having a Bible on my phone um, in 2007. So if you have a Bible on your phone or on your, your iPad or, or whatever digital device you have, um, you have a Bible with you all the time. I had a, I call it my truck Bible. I got this uh, paper Bible at, uh, at some Danny Johnson event. And, uh, and that's what went in my truck. And uh, it got, I, it has duct tape on it now because I used it so much. So when I'd stop at a at a at a train in there in Riverside, we had trains, and uh, I'd have to stop at the train, and you know I'd, I'd have time to read my Bible if I was at the DMV. You know you, you don't know how long you're sitting in the DMV. You might think is that's not a great place to read your Bible, and it's not ideal. But let me tell you, when we start to uh, when the Lord gives us a focus in our Bible reading, um, we can tune out everything else. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing when you can be in a crowded room with a bunch of noise and just focus on Scripture. It's a really cool uh, uh, way to, I mean, it, again, it's not ideal, but you're feeding your soul right there in, in the midst of a busy place. It's, 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 it's kind of neat when it happens. Some days it may be difficult to find reading time, so we really need to take advantage of our idle time. And a lot of us, we have more out of time than we know. I, I, I was surprised how much I could read throughout the day, you know, just you know, and I, in unplanned times. So don't get religious and say, this is the time allotted for Bible reading. I, I, that's not a bad thing necessarily. But if we, if, we, if we don't consider all the other time in our lives uh, that we could be, you know, instead of picking up a magazine, I know magazines are, are tempted, they're really colorful, and magazines can be, you know, can be good. But nevertheless, it's, it's not going to fill your mind with the same stuff that the Word can. So, um, whether it can be in your car um, or at a meeting, you know, 20 minutes early, um, keeping a Bible with you at all times come in handy and can keep you on schedule. Okay, so reading tip number three, um, read at least a chapter a day. That's what I recommend, at least a chapter a day. Now, some chapters get really long, um, so I don't want to get legalistic about it, but that's just my recommendation. Um, even if you go to bed very tired without having read anything, try to at least read a chapter prior to lights out. Um, it may be something encouraging to help you sleep after all. So, um, look, when you, when the, the I, I pray that the Spirit gives you a hunger for Bible reading that you've never had before. Because when you have that hunger for Bible reading, it will become more important than sleep. It will become more important 
than 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 eating. I'm telling you, when he gives you the hunger, um, uh, then you know you won't care as much about your sleep. You won't care about much as anything, because you know we're told not to worry about anything, right? So, um, uh, tip number four: if you are far behind, I'd say more than six days, which can happen. Don't feel the need to catch up all at once. Um, just try to read maybe two days at a time, or at least an extra chapter. So that it was gradual. So um, I used to promote uh, reading the whole Word of God. Um, Michael, I'm going to get to that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. When when you um, if you consider the whole, re, reading the whole Bible, it's a, you know it's a lot more than maybe you're you're regularly reading. So what I'm saying is um, maybe maybe consider reading just the New Testament in 2019. Maybe if you haven't read the Old Testament, read the Old Testament. I don't want to put that on anyone. I used to put like the whole Bible on people. And, um, you know, that was just, you know, just because I had that experience doesn't mean that um, I, I should lord that over people, like read the whole Bible. So what I'm saying is you need to work it out for yourself what you're going to read. I suggest that you commit, and we're going to talk about that really soon. And stick to a plan. Um, so then, um, and and that way, I don't want to overburden people. It's the last thing I want to do because I know if if you know people that work a lot and they work a lot of hours, they're just not going to have the time to read a whole um, hold the Bible. So, read. Okay. So the point is not to burn out. Don't read in advance, um, and don't wait to catch up on a certain day. Just develop a daily habit. I'm telling you, when you do it, you're going to want to do it. So I wanted to say that. Um, Brooke uh, said, yes, the Word of God changed my life. It is really the place where I got to know Jesus. Amen, Brooke. Thank you for sharing. And then uh, Michael Tishnell says, here's a way to hear the Bible while you drive. I gave them uh, as gifts this year, NIV Live, Audio Bible, and CD. Okay, so there's a way. And I've talked to people that, that tell me that, that um, they don't read as well as they hear. So they have a more um, an inclination or an aptitude to, to listen better than read. And I get that. I, I can't appreciate that for myself, but I can appreciate that other people um, learn audibly better than they learn through reading. So um, other than Bible CDs, there are um, um, the YouVersion Bible app, which, which I use. And I'm not saying it's better than anything else. It's just what I use. YouVersion, um, many of the versions have an audible, um, uh, have a, um, there's a, like a play button at the bottom of the chapter, and it's a way it will read the, the Bible to you. And most of the times it's, it's on a regular, uh, you know, voice, it's not a computer voice. So that is a great way to read the Word of God, if you can hear it also. I have a problem audibly. Uh, it's hard for me to follow. I mean, you can develop um, a habit of it. So anyway, thank you, Michael. Uh, Pam said, this is something I've been convicted of lately, putting God first before Facebook games, and this is very timely teaching. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. Um, I was convicted personally um, of my Facebook time, of sports, and so I let go of baseball years ago, but sports have stayed in my life. Just And it's not like I watch games. I don't even watch football or baseball games, but I like to follow scores. And, and those scores even affect me because I have – you know, teams I'd rather watch and teams I, I want to win and teams I don't want to win. <laughs> it's stupid. Uh, I don't want to put down sports because I like sports, but at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, they're meaningless. And so all I'm saying is I was convicted late October to, um, to go on a fast from sports, media, and Facebook. And, um, and so for 30 days, I, I followed that. I took Facebook off my phone and it remains off my phone because I, I'd get addicted. I'd like pick it up every two minutes. I'd want to know, um, did someone say something? Did someone like my post? It's craziness. It really is. So um, Facebook is now only on my computer and it's only when I'm sitting on my computer. I'm not on it nearly as long as it was. So that saved me. And you know what I've done? Instead of that, I've been reading the books, the stack of books that I have that are really, most of them are good books. <laughs> Some of them <laughs> I had to discard. But nevertheless, um, any, anyway, 
All I'm saying is, uh, thank you, Pamela. I really appreciate you sharing that conviction because I've had the same conviction. I can totally relate to that. Um, so uh, you might want to distance yourself from Facebook. That's good, good ideas because I'm telling you, there's a lot of good things about Facebook. I've, I'm closer to so many more people that I wouldn't normally, and like Michael Tishnell is one of them. He was a high school mate of mine. I worked with him in, in one of my first jobs. And uh, I'm glad for Facebook that we can, uh, you know, uh, talk again. But nevertheless, um, Facebook sucks your time. <laughs> so there's good things and there's bad things like everything else. So my fifth tip was don't read too far ahead. And guys, I want to close this re really um, I, in 20 minutes. We should be done here. So thanks for sticking with me this morning on a, on a, on a uh, great Saturday morning. Um, so uh, don't read too far ahead. And I'm telling you, just, um, just get used to reading daily. But if you know you're going to be extremely busy over a few days, it might help to read ahead. Um, but don't read so far ahead that you, you, the, the, the whole key to this is to develop the habit. And I'm telling you, um, although uh, you don't always want to read the Bible, you don't feel like reading the Bible, or may, maybe you feel like you've sinned too much to read the Bible, please don't let the Bible, don't let the devil get to you. You don't sin too much not to read the Bible. You need to be in the Bible. You need to be seeking God. And just, um, and just, just seek him with all your heart, regardless of what you're feeling, regardless of, of where you're at. And just, just, just go to him. And I'm telling you, guys, I, I can't stress this enough. This is one more element. We have the three elements we talked about, prayer, reading, and fellowship. But if you're new to seeking God, if, if you're new to the Word of God, I, I suggest highly, I can't recommend this highly enough, to seek someone else that's read the Bible, seek someone else that knows God far more than you do, seek someone that loves God far more than you do, and spend time with them. This is true discipleship, and it's something that's not really typically happening in our churches today. So seek, seek God and seek um, people that can, that can teach you. So, because people that are mature in the Lord, people that have been reading the Bible over and over and over again, they have they want nothing more than to teach and to show other people. And it's not like they be they don't they don't replace the Holy Spirit, but they they're like Christ in the flesh, and that's what the teachers are are here for today. And uh, you know we we you know we each have different gifts, and there's people out there that want to teach you. Um, so I, I encourage you if you if this is new to you if the Bible's new to you and you're not a mature believer find someone that is and reach out to me and maybe you know we can talk about you know what to do I'm open you can email me you can contact me through Facebook um, if you need uh, help or any kind of advice I want to make myself available because I know there's people out there that are isolated and they're not necessarily talking to anybody that knows anything about this so. I want to be available. You can email me through the website, uh, thebibleteam.com. So to get the most out of reading the Bible this year and increase the odds of finishing, you may want to try the following. So these are ideas um, that will help you make the most of reading the Bible. And before I get to that, I want to sh share some things. Michael Tishnell said, uh, Facebook can be an idol. Anything that pulls you away from God is an idol. Thank you, Michael. You hit the nail on the head. Um, Facebook can easily be an idol. It's been an idol in my life. So thank you, Michael. Um, Cindy Sue says, love daily scripture reading. You can find monthly plans online. And she also said, love listening to Dr. David Jeremiah daily on his radio app, Turning, uh, Turning Point as well. Okay, so uh, yeah, I love David, David Jeremiah. There's some teachers I absolutely love to tune into. But uh, let's face it. We need to be taught by Jesus and stay in the Word of God. So there's no uh, substitute for the Word of God. Christian books are great, and and Christian pastors like David Jeremiah, I love him. Alistair Begg's another one I like, um, but but they should not um, come. And in, instead, there are no substitute for you know your daily reading of of Scripture. So um, you can learn a lot from great men and great women of God. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we need to develop our own faith. What we were talking about, uh, Brett Brown, he confessed, I need to read more. I'm a technical mania reader at best. I need to pick up the good book again. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate that. I really do. Because I was uh, in a technical job doing technical, uh, you know, uh, IT stuff for many years. So before I read the Word of God, it was, it was foreign to me. It is the good book. And that's a reason. It, it feeds your soul. 
And it's so exciting. Look, guys, some of the best stories are in the Bible. It's there's excitement, there's uh, there's passion, uh, there's there's uh, you know uh, love stories. It's all good. I mean, it's and it's fun. It and it's really enjoyable. So and and God did that for a purpose. He really did. He knows what makes us tick. He knows what what gets us excited. And so I'm I'm convinced. He made the Bible so that it, 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 it feeds our need for entertainment. And he's done that. Every time I read, you know, I'll read about the flood. We'll read about Abraham. We'll read about, uh, you know, uh, Jacob and Laban. And, and they're, they're, I, I'm entertained. It, it, it's my entertainment. And uh, the TV, the stuff on the TV is just, um, most of it's garbage. Let's face it, garbage and it leads you nowhere. It doesn't point you in a good direction at all. As a matter of fact, it usually points you away from God. So I'm not saying that there's no good entertainment on TV, but I'm saying what we have in the Word of God is fantastic entertainment, and it teaches us about God. It's like multifold. So here's to get the most out. Back to my tips. Here's to get the most, and thank you, Brett uh, Brown, and everyone that's, that's participated. Welcome, uh, Ed Dudley. So to get the most out of reading the Bible, um, increase the odds of finishing, you may want to try the following. So read in a quiet place, free from distractions, ideally. Read in a quiet place. Um, at least once a week, read the Bible without putting a time limit on your reading. So go into a place or go out to a Starbucks and get holed up somewhere where you, you don't have any uh, time limit. And um, read the Word as if to devour it. Think about a nice juicy steak for those that you like steak. And just take your time. Don't be in a hurry. And just let the Holy Spirit feed you as you read. And if you don't understand something, read it again. And like I say, this is where discipleship can really be a big part because if you have someone that's read it before and knows about this stuff, they can help you discern. So what I love about reading the Bible over and over again is um, the more you read it, the more you understand it. So you read Genesis one year. And you'll get some key concepts. You'll get some great stuff. You won't get it all. And it's the thing. If you read a whole chapter, you're not going to get every point in the chapter when you read it. So if you read it the next year, you read it again and say, oh, I get new stuff. And we have all relate to that. And what's great about this, even if you read the chapter 40 times over and over, um, and you read it that 41st time, you think in your mind you're thinking, well, what am I going to get? I'm not going to get anything. I read it again. You read it the 41st time, and you're in a different place in your life than you were 40 years ago. So the Lord's, it's, it's dynamic. The Holy Spirit works with, you know, each time we read something and, um, and, and we always learn something new. And even if we're reminded, it's all good. If we're reminded, we need to be reminded. How many times does Peter say, I want to remind you? How many times does Moses say, be careful, be careful? And you're, you're, you, you, you are being careful when you read daily. It's a careful way to live about your life. Um, amen. Thank you, Cindy Sue. It's a living. Uh, we will always get new truths. Amen. Um, and I want to say something about, oh yeah, Cindy Sue said, I recently heard someone say to read the New Testament reading only the red print, what Jesus says. Yeah, I like that. But, it, you know, the red print is actually what Jesus said, but there's also, you know, good things that, that are also said. So, I mean, I, I don't mind that approach, and it's probably maybe a good practice to do it once. Um, or, or more, but I, I'm just saying that there's there's other good things that are mentioned that is beyond the red print. Thank you, Cindy Sue. Michael Tishnu said, <coughs> and not only are the good entertainment, are they good, the true accounts of history? I believe that, Michael. I believe that, and I and I, and I do encourage you. I wasn't going to even mention this today. Michael said um, they are true as history. I absolutely agree that when I first started reading the Word of the God, I, I didn't have a conviction that. Um, well, I mean, many years ago, I, uh, I I doubted. I had doubts about what was uh, written in the Bible, um, um, and I and and I, I'm the one of those guys, one of those crazy guys that take it literally. I take I take what Genesis one, the account of creation. I take it literally. Uh, morning, there was morning, and there was evening, the first day, and so I believe that God created the earth in six days. Even within his Ten Commandments, if you read Exodus 20, um, he says, I, For I created the earth in six days. It was a model for our week, work week. 
I worked six days, I rested on the seventh. This is what I want you to do. That's Exodus 20. So all I'm saying is, um, and, and there's plenty of websites that can help if, if you're having a hard time with, um, with a young earth, you know, a, a six day creation and 6,000 year old earth, I'm telling you, there's plenty of websites that back this up that use science to suggest otherwise. In other words, we've been lied to. Our public schools have been lying to us, and I'm getting off on a tangent. But nevertheless, when our kids are lied to the day out about evolution and millions of years, it's, it's, it's garbage. They found, uh, uh, they found uh, soft blood tissue in T-Rex bones. T-Rex bones, these are bones that they say, the, scientific, the mainstream scientific community, they say they're 65 million years old. And they found soft blood tissue, red collagen, collagen, bl red blood cells in dinosaur bones. And they're finding it, it's not just, that wasn't a unique thing, they're finding more and more soft tissue that hasn't been fossilized. So all I'm saying is, do you, do you really think that collagen, that red blood tissue, the soft blood tissue has lasted for 65 million years? What do you, what do you, what do you think we are? We're not, we're not idiots out here. So I'm trying to say that um, it's all, it's all true. Um, so all, all I'm saying is if you can believe the first book of the Bible in Genesis, you have no problem with all, all the rest. God can do things with his creation that, you know, supersede the laws, right? That's what a miracle is, supersedes physics. And when we understand what we serve a God that's that great, that can create like that, that can do all those things, he can work in our lives. If he can part the Red Sea for the Israelites, which I believe literally happened, he parted the Red Sea, he can, he can go before us and do mighty things in our own lives that we couldn't even comprehend. So all I'm saying is I implore you, I, I encourage you to read the Bible as it says. Read it for face value and take it and receive it. And if you have a problem with it, if you don't understand it, just take it to God and say, God, I'm having a hard time with this. And I'm telling you, there's people out there that have explanations and understanding. The dating methods are, are wrong. It's the, the, the scientific community, they're, they're unreliable. Um, so thank you, um, Michael Tishnell, for that. A little, that little tangent. We're, we're, I need to wrap up here. So um, pray before reading. This is absolutely important. Pray before reading. If your mind is preoccupied, nothing will sink in. Pray that you are not distracted and your heart is open. Prayer works. And let me tell you something. When I, I've read um, before, you know, when I was developing a habit, um, I can remember thinking about everything but I was reading. So I allowed the cares and the concerns and the worries of my life to overshadow my reading. And I had to pray. I said, Lord, I said, help me to, help me to, help me to uh, understand. Help me to grasp this. It was so frustrating. I don't know how many times I, I had to pray or how long it took. But eventually, eventually I could read. But we need to pray because it's, 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 it's an act of the spirit when we read the Bible. It's not, it's not an act of, like I'm telling you, atheists can read the Bible and get nothing from it. So it's, it's about, it's a spiritual experience with God when you read. And, um, and I'm telling you, the more you read, the more you understand. So prayer, pray before reading. Holy Spirit, please help me to read. Help me to know what I'm reading. Help me to understand. You know, simple prayers like that. Keep a journal with you. I suggest highly that you journal. I didn't always journal in the past. It's another thing that God uh, changed in my life, transforming me to want to write. And um, so as you read, if you have a question or revelation, write it down. Uh, you will remember what you're uh, reading more, and you can ask questions um, online. So you can... Um, when you keep a journal, it you know writing things down. Your teachers told you to take notes because it reinforces every time you read, write it. It 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 you it helps you to retain what you're learning. So you need to you need to you write it down. It helps. And also you you know if you're if you're working with someone that's you know uh, you know with a, with a spiritual father so to speak, someone that's been down this road longer. Um, you, you'll have that account to share. You know, this is what I was struggling with when I was reading this week, so, so forth. So um, find a close friend. Here's a great suggestion that I recommend everybody. I used to call them Bible reading buddies. Find a close friend to read through with you and discuss what you're reading. Uh, don't wait for the conference call. Um, God will use your enthusiasm to bless others, and you will be blessed in return. So I didn't even mention the conference call. <clears throat> it's something we do for the Bible team. Um, so if there's no one you found um, to read along with you, 
if, if you don't have anyone to really share what you're reading in your word, because I'm telling you folks, most people, most people, even many Christians, let me get this clear, even many Christians don't want to hear what you, about what you've been reading in the Bible. They don't. And I, I don't have a great answer for that. But one of the answers is because they're not in the Bible, it makes them uncomfortable. That's probably the best answer I have. It, they, it's uncomfortable to many other Christians, and, and they might be jealous of your excitement. They can easily be jealous of your excitement. Remember I talked about being transformed and producing fruit. If other Christians in your church are not actively pursuing Jesus, don't expect them to have fruit, a good fruit. You know what I'm saying? So this, this might turn some light bulbs on for those people that have been going to church many years and uh, not understanding why people are ugly why people can be jerks and say snarky things. Well, it's probably because they're not spending much time with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? If they're not plugging in, if they're not remaining in him, they're not going to produce fruit. So, I mean, this, this whole concept will change the way you go about life because you can spot those that have been connected to Jesus and those that haven't been. So all I'm saying is you might not have someone to share these things that you're reading in the Bible. So what I wanted to do from day one of the Bible team is create an environment or a venue that people could uh, connect with and, and share what they've been reading in the Bible. And that's the BibleTeam.com. We have conference calls. So on the menu on the uh, menu on the right, it says uh, join us weekly and you click join us weekly and it gives you, um, it gives you the uh, uh, Monday Bible call information. So there's a phone number to call on Monday nights and you can join us. And if you have problems with that, let me know if you have problems with the, if you have problems with that uh, schedule. Uh, you know if you want to maybe consider uh, change. You know having another call. At a certain, we we we've, we've thought about that, but nevertheless, all I'm saying is um, uh, it's important to share what you're reading. It's important because uh, you know how um, if you if if, if water uh, pours into a pond and it just sits there, uh, the water tends to stagnate over time. But if water pours into, like if it's a river and it pours into a lake, right? And that lake, and then there's an outpouring from the lake, it's healthy, it's more healthy. So all I'm saying is uh, don't keep your Bible reading to yourself. Because here's, here's what's cool about this. A, um, the Holy Spirit can teach other people from what you're reading, and B, when you share with other people, you get their unique perspectives. And so in certain uh, passages, of course, there's different perspectives. There's a different way to look at it. You know, you read the story of, um, I think it's what, Luke 15, it's the story of the prodigal son. You have the perspective of the young man that, uh, you know, goes out and sows his wild oats. You have the, pros the, the perspective of his older brother, and then you have the perspective of the father. And I, I heard it once eloquently from, uh, from on, on stage when Christian leader said, um, you know, each of us in our lives will experience one of those perspectives. We'll each have been a son that wanted to uh, do crazy and wild things like, like I used to do. And then we'll have an older son's perspective of, of looking down on other people that want to go, go their crazy way. And then you have the perspective of the father that loves the son so much. He doesn't, he doesn't care what he's done. And as long as he comes back to him, that's what he really wants. So that's, that's the love of God, right? So anyway, all I'm saying is there's three ways of, of looking at that particular parable. Um, so it's a beautiful thing. Okay. So um, that being said, that's all the, uh, the, uh, the tips I had. So now I want to turn to some other things. Oh, we're right at 11. So I want to get done with this. Um, I want to read from uh, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Um, and I'll be brief because I did not want to be on this long. Um, Luke 10, verse 38, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. So Martha is asking Jesus to tell Mary to leave his presence to help her prepare the dinner. Verse 41. 
But the Lord said to her, Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing, one thing, I got my finger up. <laughs> There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken from her. So all I'm saying is this time we spend just sitting there, quote unquote, reading the word in prayer, and maybe we're at a Starbucks for two hours, which was not uncommon for me when I was just figuring this out. I had a spiritual father. Um, th that time is so much more meaningful than anything else you do all day. And we get worried and we consumed about all these things in our lives. But what I'm telling you to do, what I'm encouraging you to do is sit at the feet of Jesus. Spend this time daily. Sit at the feet of Jesus reading, praying, and when, when, when we're on these Bible calls, these conference calls on Monday, we sit at the feet of Jesus. Holy Spirit drives those calls. There's no true format, right? We just read the Word of God and we just discuss it. It's open, and we want everyone to enjoy it, and we participate. It's not just me talking like, like this. Um, so, guys, I encourage you to seek God with all your heart. Um, so this is your invitation for 2019 to... Uh, read the Word of God, to pray daily, and to fellowship. And guys, I, I encourage you to, to seek the Lord in the way that you haven't sought Him before and get help. Find people that can uh, join you in this, in this effort. Close friends or you know, people that you know, know love God. If people don't love God, they're, of course they're not going to want to join you. So guys, this has been a, a, a wonderful time for me. I hope it's been a time for you. Um, and I'm going to post this again on, on YouTube for the new year. So um, find a reading plan on thebibleteam.com that, that you can commit to and, and be persistent and just, and just develop that habit. I love you all. Have a great and happy new year. Bye.